Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I have been picking June berries and a few golden raspberries and it's gotten so hot that I'm taking a break in my favorite shady spot in my food forest underneath my squirrel planted hazel tree. So while I'm kind of cooling down here for a few minutes, I thought that I would talk about a comic that makes the rounds that has really good intentions and a really important core message, but I take like one little issue with it and I wanna discuss it today. So this is a comic that kind of um, self-sufficiency groups, prepper groups, um, very um, progressive groups share, kind of anarchist groups, anybody who's criticizing the government and also interested in growing their own food and interested in sustainable agriculture has shared this comic. The cottage core groups, it's everywhere. So I think that the artist is trying to communicate a really important message here, which is that we live in a system where those in power want to control our access to all kinds of resources and goods. And they want us to exchange our money and essentially our life hours. You should check out my video on your money or your life for the goods that they want to um, sell to us, right? So when we live in a world where corporations and perhaps government institutions and the haves want to control our access to uh, resources, it is such a revolutionary and empowering thing to circumvent that system and say, actually, I'm gonna find a way to not need to transact with you at all to get what I need to take care of myself and my community. So the example in the comic is a person who buys a green bell pepper at the grocery store. And instead of feeling like they are now caught in a system where the only place they can get bell peppers is by buying them at the grocery store where they are produced by industrial agriculture and shipped long distances. I'm adding my own little commentary here when I say that. They are circumventing that altogether and saying, actually, I'm just gonna save the seeds and grow my own peppers. I don't have to buy seeds from a large company that is um, selling seeds. I don't have to buy peppers anymore. I can grow my own and it's free. It only takes time and sunshine. And I can then have my own harvest of peppers. And that is a revolutionary act. Gardening is revolutionary when it is a statement of, I am not going to participate in a deeply exploitive and flawed system. That's my take on the comic. Um, I think that that's a wonderful and important message. It's something that I talk about here on this channel all the time. I do not encourage self-sufficiency. I think self-sufficiency is a myth. I encourage community interdependence. When we have strong local communities, when our households are strong, when we have strong connections with our neighbors, when we work together as a local community to build resilience and use um, effective design principles to not only change the way we grow our food, but the way that we interact with each other and the way we structure our society, we can push toward resilience. That is a big threat to those in power right now who like the system and profit from it. They do not want change. So I think that's a great comic. I had a little critique. I actually commented on a post where this was shared because um, in permaculture, we strive for effective design. Not something that somebody just talks about on their YouTube channel or somebody shares on Instagram or somebody memes, but something that actually works in real life. Not something that someone just spouts off in a TED talk, show how 2008 I am, but something that actually works in real life. And so I often on this channel will kind of critique or break down memes and talk about like, this is a good sentiment, but here's why it's not practical, or here's why it's more fantasy than reality, or this is a really great idea. We do not have the proper infrastructure and design to implement it effectively. What do we need to change in order to get from where we're at to what is portrayed in the meme or the comic or the sentiment that's expressed? I talk about that stuff a lot on this channel because for me, as somebody who is constantly looking for those connections and looking like, how do we make the steps? How do we bridge the gap? I want to see effective, resilient design implemented to improve the quality of life for all people and to help the planet. And so I don't want to sit around and fantasize. I don't want to sit around and talk about ideals that are not going to work in real life. For me, my only sticking point with this comic is that um, a green bell pepper is an immature pepper. And if we want to set folks up for success, if we want to have more than just like, this is a really cool sentiment, but we want to have something that is effective in producing the outcome that we want, we need to communicate 
effective, good advice. We need to have a plan that is efficacious. So when we're looking at a green bell pepper, that's actually an immature pepper. And um, the green bell pepper was something that was a genius marketing tactic because it's an unripe pepper, gives a lot of people, including me, raging heartburn if you eat it raw because we have all of these peppers that particularly North American farmers grow and they can't get to ripen in time. So what do you do with this essential like waste product so that farmers can make an income off of it? Well, you market it as not unripe pepper, but as a separate variety. There's a red bell pepper. If you're a kid from the eighties, like me, a red bell pepper and a green bell pepper. And those are the two kinds of peppers. And then eventually we had yellow bell peppers and it wasn't, uh, except for people like my grandfather or my mother, if you interact with people who have a garden and already grew like eight different kinds of peppers that you can't find in the store, you wouldn't necessarily as a child of the eighties or earlier, be aware that there are other peppers out there. And you wouldn't necessarily be aware that a green bell pepper is just an underripe pepper that, um, you know, um, capitalism has tried to find a way to sell to consumers. Yes, it's a resource. I'm not arguing that you shouldn't eat green bell peppers. If you enjoy them, go for it. I find them gross and, Un unsavory in every way. I don't like to eat them, which is saying a lot because I rarely meet a vegetable I don't like. So when we're telling people in this comic book, like I get, I get that this is not what the author was intending, but we have to be careful in our communication that it's effective. So people will take messages like this and you would be surprised at how they will apply them literally. A green bell pepper is an underripe pepper. Therefore, the seeds inside it are not mature. Therefore, the odds of actually being successful in growing your own peppers from them are not so great. Not to mention the fact that it's probably an F1 hybrid. And if it's not, it is not a pepper that is produced for high seed quality for the home gardener to use and to harvest their seed from it every year. So who knows if your seed will even germinate? Who knows if you will get the kind of pepper that you bought from the store? That may not seem like a big deal. And like, maybe folks are like, Angela, you're, you're getting, you're taking it too seriously. You need to chill out a little bit. But I see folks taking things in memes and being like, this is the best idea ever, I'm gonna do this. And I'm not saying that the um, author suggested that they do exactly what she wrote in her comic. But I am saying that people will take your advice and they'll follow it even if it's terrible advice. And we want to set people up for success. Someone thinks like, yes, I'm gonna buck the system. I'm gonna become more resilient in producing my own food. I'm gonna buy that green bell pepper at the store. I'm gonna save the seeds. I'm gonna grow all my own peppers from now on and then nothing germinates. And they think, well, I'm a failure. I guess I can't garden. I guess, I, I guess I'm not good at this. I guess I can't do it. And maybe they don't realize that you were set up for failure from the beginning because you were trying to grow a plant from seeds that were not yet mature. Or perhaps they get the seeds to germinate and then they grow them and the peppers that are produced are really unpalatable. And they're like, well, this is terrible. I'm just gonna go back to buying them from the store. So you need to create successful interactions, successful opportunities, opportunities for folks to feel like they're doing well and that they can take the next step. And so for me, that was my only critique of this comic was like, are we setting people up for success? Are we helping people feel empowered to take the next step? Or are we setting people up for an experiment where they're like, guess the system is the way it is and guess like I can't really buck it. I can't really work to change things because I failed on the first, the first time out of the gate. So yes, let's treat gardening as a revolutionary act. Let's treat it as a radical act to care for the planet, to care for our neighbors, to care for our households, to care for our own bodies. And let's communicate effective strategies for getting there in the first place. Thanks for watching. Please check out my Patreon down below. I will be back very soon. Hopefully the weather will cool down a little bit. You stay well and safe in the meantime.